So here we are, the month in which we celebrate Thanksgiving and when being grateful and appreciation come more to the forefront. And while expressing gratitude is great, it often merely scratches the surface. So what I thought we could do today is go beyond thanks and look more at gratitude as a powerful transformational tool, a deeper sacred practice that helps us bring our highest of our best of ourselves to our friends, our families, and the world. And when we can do that, we will also discover the miracles hidden within our everyday moments. Now, in metaphysical teachings, we say that everything is energy and that energy vibrates at different frequencies. So if you have low energy, fear, unforgiveness, regrets, you're gonna vibrate at a low level. And if you have higher energy, love, appreciation, compassion, forgiveness, you're gonna vibrate at a higher level. And all of those frequencies uh, surround us every day all along the way. And when we're able to tap into that more, it helps us have a greater appreciation for the things and people around us. But there's a big difference between being grateful for everything in our lives and fully embodying gratitude. When we can fully embody gratitude, it becomes cellular level. Again, opening us up to the richnesses around us and how we want to move and be in the world. And if we look around, we can see countless examples of how gratitude has reshaped lives. For some people, it helps them make the shift from looking at what's lacking to what's abundant. And that abundance can be in terms of your friends, it could be your relationships, your finances, your spiritual awareness, and so forth. And then there are times when expressing gratitude, for example, in the middle of a job loss or loss of a home or loss of a business, has opened up pathways and opportunities where initially there seemed to be none. And how many times have you heard someone say that they received an unexpected medical diagnosis that stopped them in their tracks? But at the same time, it opened up a voluminous space of appreciating the things and people around them. And they may even have been things and people around them that they took for granted before, but they now see them as incredible gifts. Author Roy T. Bennett said, being grateful does not mean that everything is necessarily good. It just means that you can accept the gift within it. So I've heard many people say, and it's usually a woman, but other people have said it too, <laughs> something along the lines of, I got a divorce and lost 185 pounds. <laughs> and it wasn't the weight that came off of them, it was getting rid of him. So I know, just a silly example, but my point is, we know divorce can be a very difficult situation, but there's always a gift in it. Some of you may have also heard me um, tell my story about the time I got in a bike accident. I rode over some rocks and gravel, I went over the handlebars, somewhere while I was in the air I blacked out, and when I woke up I was on the ground on all fours with most of my weight on both arms. And I knew this one was broken, I was still able to reach my um, backpack and get my phone out, and I called a friend of mine that lives close by to help me. And so after I hung up from her and I was laying on the ground, the first thing that came to my mind was to say a gratitude list. And even though this happened almost seven years ago now, so almost seven years, I still remember exactly what I said in the order that I said it, and I said it out loud. I said, I'm on the sidewalk and not in the street. It's daytime and not nighttime. It's a sunny day and not raining. I'm only two miles from the hospital. I have health insurance. My friend who's coming to get me, she'll know exactly what to do. And the last and the biggest thing I said that day was God is here. 
Now, that gratitude list just flowed out of me without me even really thinking about it. And that's what I mean about gratitude becoming cellular level. And if we can look at things that way, where we don't really have to think about it, it just naturally flows out into the collective consciousness and starts to become part of our everyday experience. Now, just to be clear, there's a, there's a big difference between saying that we're going through something and ignoring our pain and challenges, right? And acting like everything is honky-dory and spiritually bypassing it and looking at the, rose, the world through rose-colored glasses. But if we are embodying gratitude, it means that once we can start to actively look out, seek out those nuggets of gratitude in everyone, in everything, then it opens us up to more things for which we can be grateful. So just how do we make that shift from looking at gratitude as more than a fleeting feeling or a polite thank you and use it as a transformational tool that helps build up our resilience to face life's ebbs and flows with grace? So step number one, let's start with something easy. Let me go one more. Okay, make a commitment to making a daily gratitude list. 10, at least 10 things that you're grateful for and make a commitment to do it in the morning or in the evening. Now, if you do it in the morning, it automatically helps you raise your vibrational frequency and then throughout the day, you're looking more for those nuggets of gratitude. If you do it in the evening, no matter what was going on in your day, it will remind you of all the ways that you were still blessed with whatever happened during the day. And a bonus might even be that you might sleep better because you're gonna to go to bed with this list of things that you had in your head. And for you overachievers out there, <laughs> do one in the morning and one at night. <laughs> Step number two, make an unwavering decision to look at everyone with whom you have a challenging situation or history only through the eyes of love and appreciation. It doesn't matter if it's a coworker, if it's a neighbor, it's a family member, if it's um, a stranger on the street, if it's an ex, if it's a political candidate, make an unwavering decision to look at them through the eyes of love and appreciation. Now, looking at some of your faces out here <laughs> and the air that got sucked out of the room, <laughs> some of you might be thinking, uh-uh, you didn't see what he did. What about what she said? I know I'm not saying overlooking behaviors. What I'm saying is making a commitment, an unwavering commitment, to look at them through the eyes of love and appreciation. Step number three, start tooting your own horn. Start tooting your own horn. And what I mean by that is create a grateful heart for the person that you are, for the love and the joy and the wisdom and the compassion that you bring to the world. Now, some people might see that as being egotistical or conceited, but this is not about how other people think you should think about yourself. This is about you loving yourself. It's about showing up boldly, unapologetically, and authentically. The world would not be the same without you. The world would not be the same without you. So think about, and maybe this is something else to write down, all the things that make you you, what you love about yourself, what other people have said they love about you, what brings you joy. Like Reverend Elizabeth says all the time, what lights you up? What are your greatest accomplishments? What are you most proud of? Whatever those things are, just own them. Live them. Be them. 
And step number four, remember the law of attraction. Like attracts like, so if you raise your vibrational frequency, it automatically starts to pour out into the collective consciousness and raises the vibration of frequency of the things and people around you. So I had been thinking about this concept of um, imbi fully embodying gratitude a little more lately when a friend of mine said that we should walk around as if there is a circle of love in front of us and, and around us. And she said to think of the visual of Pigpen from the Charlie Brown comics. <laughs> and you know Pigpen, he's got dirt everywhere, and poor thing, bless his heart, everywhere he goes, the dirt goes with him. So imagine yourself standing in a field brimming with love and gratitude. It's in front of you, it's behind you, it's on both sides of you. Maybe it's even above you and below you. And that would mean that everywhere you walk, everywhere you move, everywhere you sit, everywhere you stand, you would literally be bumping into people and things with that brimming vibrational field. Navigating through life this way couldn't possibly do anything other then raise the vibrational frequency of this world. And all those people and things you're bumping into, mm -hmm. and all those people and things they're bumping into, they're gonna take that vibrational frequency with them where they're going as well. So I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. And I want you to think about something that you're grateful for. Just pick one thing for now. And I want you to think about how does that feel in your body? And where do you feel it in your body? Is there a sensation to it? Is there a temperature? Maybe some heat? Is there a color associated with it? Is there a shape? Does it put a smile on your face? Now imagine that that feeling, whatever that is, that it's completely surrounding you like a cone from head to foot. And now imagine walking around, encountering people, places, and things, and infusing all of that with whatever that feeling is that you're carrying around. And just imagine how different our world would look and feel if we all started walking around like that. And you can open your eyes. So as we move into this season of the year, let's make an individual and collective commitment to a full body, deeply soulful, pig pen infused <laughs> field of gratitude and for uncovering and enjoying the miracles found in our everyday moments.